We're potting riff tracks. Riff, riff tracks. tracks. And not only are we potting riff tracks, we're potting Julie and Jack. Julie and yeah. Jack. Julie and Jack. Not to be confused with any other Jack combinations. No. Like Rose and Jack or Jack and Jill. No, Julie and Jack. One is boring as the other. <laughs> somehow, somehow they're both exactly as boring as the other. They they have the they have chemistry in the sense that they're made for each other. They have chemistry in that regard alone. They are the same amount of boring, shallow, vapid characters. I, I feel a sim has tons more personality than any of these characters. I feel like the NPCs, not the NPCs in video games now, like I'm not even going to give them that much credit. I mean NPCs in fucking Castlevania 2. Like, you, the, you know those guys? You, 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 mm -hmm. That's the level. I think, like, almost those, like, uh, 90s RPGs of NPCs who have exactly one line of dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they may have a little too much personality. But, yeah, this is uh, another magnum opus by James Nguyen. And we have all of the staples of James yeah. Nguyen. Famous for... Creating the Birdemic, mm -hmm. and then the second Birdemic, and now Sea Eagle, which I can't help but think he may have, someone in the production team may have misheard uh, Sea Eagle and thought it was like Sea Eagle, kind of the same way that solar panels are soul bounce. Soul bounce. Soul bounce. Soul bounce. All right. Uh... <laughs> Did you learn anything? Of, did you learn anything about this movie going into it? Um, I know it predates um Birdemic, and I really struggle to see just um because he has a bit of a habit of kind of aping off of Hitchcock films be, with a little bit of a sci-fi uh mm. slash current events twist, and I I did kind of have trouble piecing this one together um, without just seeing it as a proto birdemic I think this one has more... I do like when James Dwin has, like, insane shit to uh, show you, like, the birdemic itself. Or, well, like, the showdown with Dr. G and a replicant. Mm-hmm. But when people are just being people in James Wen movies, that is so fascinating to me because he doesn't fucking know what a person acts like. He almost reminds me of George Lucas in that sense, uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, I was watching these two leads and just had to look up, hey, were these the same people in Birdemic? And obviously they're not. But just because of the delivery, it's one of those dialogue people who just does not know how to do dialogue so you're left with that kind of george lucas effect where you have these people spouting off things in such an unnatural way like oh i thought all nerds were supposed to have like you know tape on their glasses and pocket protectors and just different th and you know you look like a baywatch and i i think that may be verbatim if i'm not mistaken but you, you look like a baywatch baby. And yeah, so uh, there's there's that one. So uh, his dialogue's just so stilted, and so much of this is just filler. And I know we're saying this about the guy who did Birdemic, who made sure we knew just where Rod was par parking his possibly not hybrid to get from establishing shot to establishing shot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it just a, felt like filler. so much parking in his movies, mm -hmm. and not the cool kind, no, like the 
kind that would make you yell at this driver if they're driving in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we should just uh, show the people the movie and uh, mm -hmm. or then we'll, we'll explain for the podcast. Oh, audience, but, yeah. And then what would you say help describe the ape shit twist that James Wan incorporates in this one? We'll get to it when we get to it. It's <laughs> let's see. Uh, and I forgot how to do my okay, here it is. There we go. I will um, say unlike other on the rift tracks, this one does require a bit of homework for the listener. You should watch Birdemic before going into this to get like 50% of the jokes. Mm -hmm. From Spruce Bark Beetles to all sorts of other little neat references, solo panels. So you mm -hmm. have to watch Birdemic before getting into this one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see. We... Pepsi. Yeah, that's the opening credits. <laughs> you have the Magneto uh, opening. Golden. Yes. Uh, yeah, we've got Golden Gate Entertainment uh, with establishing the Golden Gate Bridge, a uh, stylized version, then establishing the Golden Gate Bridge in real life, then establishing through text over clouds the Golden Gate Bridge. Justin Kunkel, I love that name. Very yeah, again, just, just in case you didn't know, this is San Francisco. Yeah. We have all this Golden Gate imagery. Stellar chip. We, of course, we can't get away from his love of uh, microchips. Mm hmm. The, the main character works at Stellar Chip and just is a kind of crappy salesman yeah he has which is weird be which is weird because he has the same energy as rod from birdemic who's a successful salesman we have the sloppy guy there and we have uh our hero who has i would say uh artfully messy hair that's how they describe it i think and uh yeah the uh the boss is Dr. G from the goddamn uh, from Replica. Yeah. He, I noticed something looking at his face. He is Christopher Reeve adjacent. I would actually say I was thinking especially with uh, one of the frames that we're looking at from the boardroom meeting. Uh, he kind of has a Jim from the office if, I, if I'm getting my office characters right. Mm-hmm. Just the tastefully no. messy hair. <laughs> oh. We land on this. Oh. So we move from a business board meeting to a this very poor sex scene uh, with a blanket over everyone. And it probably looks like she's straddling his abs more than anything. Mm -hmm. Let's get past that. And not much of a better image. And, and a we, worse image. We have this guy who... All of the nerds, especially this nerd, he looks like Randall from... Uh, from Clerks. From Clerks, yeah. I just Okay, enough of that. Uh, but with the raw sexual energy of Jay from, from the same series. Mm -hmm. Especially as he puts on a little smoking jacket on red boxers and nothing else. And I love the joke. So, how's things been going? Not good. I can see the vent in your trousers. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> the one thing ruining his day. Mm hmm Yeah, I can definitely see that. And yeah, this actor who's playing our uh, Randall-looking sex uh, maniac, uh, 
uh definitely has a wiki feet page i imagine after one of the shots mm -hmm. uh, thank you james Wen, for contributing to wiki feet see we, we get lady renegade so oh, we get this because the friend recommends hey use a dating site so we've got cupidmatchmaker.net and it looks like uh MySpace would be embarrassed by this page. Oh yeah, this thing's like garbage. Like I'd expect to get like five computer viruses from this site alone. Mm -hmm. Somehow, lime wiring the latest Lincoln Park album is probably less dangerous than this. I had a WordPress site that looked better than this. So you see, after he goes into the dating site, he gets uh, emails that are perhaps uh, having some misspellings. Just saying, good good thing that Chipman here is not a not a stickler for grammar. Yeah, perhaps we can chat sometime. Yeah, and he's talking to a guy that looks like the dad from Troll 2. Who actually he says, knows. please stop bothering me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not Rip. He says, please stop bothering me. And he looks like he desperately needs to use the restroom as we see the unsuccessful sales career just kind of transition into mm -hmm. this love affair yeah he's describing his life to uh lady renegade and his friend's life who and he and she is describing her life this will come up later wink wink to him uh in a shitty bar fair, fairly shitty bar uh mm -hmm. have more mugging by this dumb bastard. And I'm sure the actor's a nice guy, but dude, not your forte. And this is where we kind of say, like, Birdemics and Let's See, just not even for the riff, per se, but mm -hmm. just to kind of get where these characters are really elevated <laughs> and, you know, become staples in, his, in his, his little pantheon of films. You have this kind of sex addicted character who's telling him, you know, like in Birdemic famously, a uh, day without sex is a day wasted. Which I believe and... was a reference, I believe that's a quote from Bob Crane who let me tell you, if you're taking lifestyle advice from Bob Crane change said life. <laughs> really do. I mean, it's Hey, ha having sex is good. Having lots of sex is good. There's such a thing as too much sex. Anyways, me getting off that soapbox. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, yeah I, I can see why. Uh, again, the, the, these people should probably get help, and they're, they're kind of these encourageable little scamps, but, uh, you know... I think there's too much pleasingness in the real world to ever accept them at that face value. <laughs> I mean, I have a fr I have a friend. I'm not going to say who it is. Mm -hmm. He he broke something. There's Thanks. just that's all I'm going to say. So mm -hmm. people out there, be careful. Don't have, don't enjoy it too much. <laughs> Anyways, enough of that. Um, you have this. Cody guy and you know Mutt and Jeff over here talking to each other <laughs> and just kind of a deck measuring contest about selling Stella chips and uh, we have the final meeting with finally a meeting with Lady Renegade and whatever his name is uh, Fuckmaster Skywalker I'm going to assume 
And then uh, one rip I just love is that they're eating at this restaurant that looks very painfully homemade. And they're saying that, oh, my salad's catching on fire since they're right beside a fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, that I feel slightly confident in saying might be projected. <laughs> One of those projected fireplaces. Yeah. He's so beefy and unkempt. Oh, yeah, and he gives this guy a... Uh client information which is you're not supposed to do that buddy and then we continue on with dates with a mild wikipedia blurb about a um, yeah which will come in handy later they watch and tear as Magneto rips the uh, uh, Golden Gate Bridge off the Senges to create a bridgeway to uh, uh, Alcatraz where the, they're keeping the humans. So somehow, somehow this is a better movie than that. I'm not kidding. This is a better movie than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't really do this. This. Don't, don't. Pull your fucking arm off! Don't get your fuck around any like that. <laughs> Just leave the... <laughs> when the when two people are in love, but they make it sound like they're murdering each other. They go on a public transport road. Of course, surprised they didn't run into the uh, man beast himself. Oh hi. Yeah, they take the San Francisco street trolley. It, it's a miracle they didn't bump into him. A miracle that they don't run into any spruce bark beetles. Yeah, as they point. go to a park. And then they go to a mountain cliff. And it just seems like the strangest montage of dates. And this probably won't be unfamiliar to people who've seen Birdemic. But yeah, it's just so out there. And unfortunately, they then go to not a good Vietnamese restaurant, but a good, good Chinese, Chinese restaurant. And if you think she's not, if you think that the lead actress in a James Wynn film is not going to wear a Chinese plum dress, you, you are, are a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Seriously? And that's how we're describing a lot of the actions because. Dialogue so lifeless and stilted. The dialogue is just absolute blood. And he starts to wonder, hey, why haven't you, like, why haven't we, you know, talked a lot about each other? I talk about myself, but you don't talk about yourself. Why have we, uh, you know, we don't usually there's not a closeness between us. And this is aggravating him, but I uh, still doing the Stella Chip bullshit. And uh yeah, he's, he's selling all the Stella chips. You know, we have this weird woman who seems to be in another movie. Come on, I, I, I think like she so. looks like she may not even be in the same room. If we're being honest, maybe not even in the same country. I'm like, that looks like it could have been filmed in Mumbai. Oh, okay, here. Uh, uh there's the Great Gatsby themed party, and I mean, we're not. Me and you, know, Jesse, we're not gadabouts, but we're we we do things. We get out and do stuff. Mm -hmm. About how many great Gatsby themed parties do you think you and me have been to? Uh, zero. Maybe point one, point five. Yeah, don't seem to really be a thing. And as it turns out, skip a little ahead. They are not a thing because this is virtual reality. 
and they haven't met. So yeah, he's he's probably the guy who is probably harassing a VR Kermit the Frog on VR chat. Mm hmm Need more of this shit. <laughs> that, that... <laughs> Our little sex freak just has the most unflattering look. Again, Randall from Clerks. I don't think, and with all uh, due respect to uh, uh, to the actor of uh, Randall, uh, yeah, I don't think that's an image most of us would want, especially for a discount Randall Graves. For sorry, Jeff Anderson. And he did this really disturbing line of him meeting her when she was, she's a kindergarten teacher and she was, he was getting attracted by her with the kid. It's, oh my God. It, oh, don't, God, I'm going to stop right now. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. Oh, wow, God. Why do I have to? Again, I feel these James Wen sex scam characters should. Definitely be in jail. Mm -hmm. He thinks that maybe, of course, Jeff thinks that maybe it's a guy. Could be some hairy knuckle guy named Chuck. Some... Remember those two thousand early two thousands memes of a girl being an acronym for guy in real life. That's that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. We get uh. The, everyone's mom from these. Mm -hmm. and then he starts to learn about her. Julie Romano. Which sounds very Russian, very Black Widow-y. Yeah. Turns that she's has won awards and decides to speak to... So he... Uh, Decides to learn more about her. So he speaks to uh, James Nguyen. They have a cup of coffee. And uh, she explains Luke some very uninteresting stuff to her. And he starts snooping around some more. And then <laughs> meet this guy. <laughs> Thomas, he just seems very interested in finding out a little more about her, which uh, at this point, I, I feel I should uh, interject that uh, um, I have a group of friends who really likes the Birdemic movie, and they tapped out uh, before the VR reveal. Because that's how slow paced this one is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This guy seems like he was in one... He's got Shyamalanian hair. And I'm not just saying that because of his ethnicity. I think it goes together to make Shyamalanian hair, but mm -hmm. just me throwing that out there. And this this would have been a time where Shyamalan was a, oh, a yeah. lot more respected than uh, you know, post last airbender. Yeah. <laughs> he violently pushes her out of this. Hold on, we we got to get a video of this for the people watching on YouTube. He's going to push her in a second and right the fuck over. <laughs> that needs to be a, that needs to be a GIF or a GIF somewhere, depending how you pronounce it. Okay, um, I have to ask you something about this picture, and you will understand this from looking at it. The YouTube people will understand this by looking at it. Um, out of all the people in this room, who would you say was probably also the guitarist for a J for a J punk band? Um, I'm going to hope that's this woman given the presentation in the burgundy pantsuit. You don't think it's the guy on the uh, right? 
I, I swear I have a Lego figure with that exact same hair piece. <laughs> I love this dude's look. So yeah, there's someone with really pointy out sticking sticking up hair, like almost punk looking. You know, definitely, you know, kind of like a delinquent culture type thing that looks kind of great. Yeah, actually. And then we have uh This guy just fell out of my mind immediately. I don't know what the fuck this guy does. Yeah, we get introduced to random side characters that really, you know, aren't the biggest, don't have the biggest impact in the story. We get the info. Is this the info dump? I think it may be. Where they talk about how, you know, they still can't be together. Mm -hmm. Then she meets her old, uh, her old college friend, not the kid, and just keep his best friend away from this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I said this before. Um, to, to people who have seen this movie, look at these three women. Uh, and for people who are watching the YouTube thing, d don't these the hair costume everything? This all all these all three of these women look like Channel Awesome era Lindsay Ellis. You know, I could definitely see, see that. You're seeing it, right? Yeah, yeah. Just stuck in front of a dial-up computer, but yeah. Also, one thing, I, I guess this was, we can be a little more lenient since this was 2003, but I love that the cutting edge computers are always so terribly dated, even for the time of the film. Yeah. So we get the uh, not cool party. So, I, I mean, I have been to some fucking dud ass parties, but. Some of the parties in these look so bad. I don't know. I'd rather dance with my sweetheart and a guy thinking about hanging out with my family. That's that's the perfect party. We have this uh, the guy that reminds you of Ted McGinley, but isn't. And the fact that they never had time for each other. <laughs> the faces that they make in the Screenshots are so bad. And here we have uh, an Oscar winner embarrassing himself. But what do you know? We got to eat. I, what else do we expect from Rift Tracks? Tibby Hedron herself. Uh, by the way, this is a lot better than uh, the replicant. Uh, cameo which is essentially about 90% as evil as the climax to the flash in terms of doing stuff to Christopher Reeve yeah anyways get it birds see she has birds and fuckers and uh yeah, they explained that she was super smart. They had a doctor. Um, one thing I think is kind of funny about James Wan's movies is that some of them just seem like interviews on a couch, like things you might see on like a, a news show or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just, but not particularly well done. Like a local news, not not your national news. So right here we're finding out about Lady Renegade. Yeah, we we'll find out about Lady Renegade. She is getting she has a tumor and does not go to the hospital for it for some reason. I'd be pretty upset by this guy coming around saying he knows my daughters. 
Yeah, I think that's just something you don't do. Yeah. Find a place where she would not be buried, probably. You see this little Magneto danger room bullshit? Mm -hmm. Where she's uploaded her memory? Cerebro? And we have the hanging out with the family guy talking about uh, spiritual love. Which is a breath of fresh air after all this. Yeah. Like, and we just slogged through a majority of this movie, and it's 80 minutes. And then we finally get to see the hanging out guy. Mm -hmm. And we learn that she's detonating soon. I love, there's one joke that they go with a lot at the end of this, where the song just goes, da -da 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 -da. and they always go, and the roadies take the stage. <laughs> Yeah, essentially they have one last goodbye. And I said, Lady Renegade is gone. Lady dot renegade dot exe has stopped working. And there's no restarting. Um like what I do enjoy about James Wen is again those kind of batshit moments uh <laughs> where yeah, this kind of has an interesting premise you know just kind of exploring ai like well before a lot of other things you know like uh, um even having what we would consider kind of traditional vr headset you know so i i, I think that's kind of there, there's some interesting aspects there but we combine that with the realistic limitations of just some random guy pulling up some computers from the early 2000s and it's like no this is this is kind of shoddy mm -hmm. I, I like I, I like James Wan's movies because again there's the unnaturalness to them mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're, those types of movies always appeal to me a lot yeah yeah, there's a lot of unnatural, just unnatural interludes as we see all these random characters just come about. And then uh, one thing I enjoy about him is ambition. Like, um, like I guess pre-Birdemic, he seemed very confident in what he was putting out there. Like, yes, this is the next Hitchcock. This is the next, you know, Kubrick or something like that. And mm. there, there's a certain scrappy confidence, I think, uh, before Birdemic that yeah, you know, we'd, we'd see him kind of, uh, like if you've seen documentaries where he's just kind of living out of a car, but he really had those aspirations and I think he really saw something great in, in his stuff. And I, I think there's something something admirable in that, even though, yeah, that's so... Mm -hmm. so, so, again, unnatural, just so stilted. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone else kind of shares his vision and I think in in if he were to get some more like minded but creative and talented people, he may he may be remembered very differently, uh, in terms of, you know, outside of Birdemic, which has kinda been something he's been carrying ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just like the types of like I always like directors who just make decisions, like weird decisions, even if it's not a good decision. I kind mm -hmm. of like the. Like, how about we just have the character say this, or the fuck not? Why don't we have him say it like, like this, like in a certain way? And I think that's something really important when you're creating. When you're creating something that's a creative team effort, I think that's good. yeah.
And for better or worse, James Wan definitely has that kind of quality to to his work. And um, yeah, it just doesn't work out much because um, I I think uh, a lot of his style is very even even for the limitations, very amateurish. Um, so I, I'm, I am considering that this is kind of a self-financed project. Um, but at the same time, hey, he's made more movies than, than I have, so mm. I'm no one to speak. And uh, again, I, I, I appreciate that, you know, he's still, he's still someone who's going at it pretty adamantly. Um, uh, even despite the kind of bad movie director reputation he's now recognized for and widely recognized for mm -hmm. so uh i like julian jack and did you say you like it too yeah um again just for the riff i think you really just have to watch birdemic just so you're aware because that's where most of the humor comes from they'll make all those references uh but there are a pretty good number of riffs that do um I do make it accessible even if you haven't seen it. So um because they do comment on just how unnatural and just uh you know kind of make some jokes in the absurd situations with these characters. So I as always the riffs are appreciated. Uh this movie is definitely not one I would recommend without riffs. Mm. So if it's between uh watching this unrift or doing the extra leg work and watching Birdemic, do the extra leg work, watch Birdemic, the riff one, and then watch this riff tracks. Yeah. Anyways, this has been Potty Griff Tracks. I am Jeremy and, Ellis. This and it's Jesse. been so appropriate because we've been hanging out. Hanging out. Hanging hey, out. Man. Hanging out with yeah. VR chat, yeah. going into hanging the out. metaverse. Hanging out, hanging out, hanging out, hanging out with some dead girls. Wait, that sounds real awful. Hanging out, hanging out, hanging out with a sex fiend. Seriously investigate that sex fiend. <laughs>